Hey everybody, I had a question from a friend on uh, DeviantArt about how to get um, your Daz Studio characters or maybe Poser characters uh, into view, and there's a few ways you can do that actually. So tonight I was going to show you uh, three ways you can do that. Um, one in which you uh, render the character in view, and two others where you render the character in Daz Studio and then move the rendered character into view. So uh, let's get started. Okay, so here I am in view, and I have this uh, scene that I've built, um, a nice forest scene, uh, you know, pretty good framing, but there's no subject here in the middle. And I have here in Daz Studio a, uh, a Jaguar character that I've posed and textured and gotten just right, and I want to get him into view. So I'm going to show you a few ways that you can do that. Um, the first way, this is the way I tend to do this, is to I actually export the object, the character from Daz Studio, and then import it into view. And to do that, you just go up here to your file menu in Daz Studio, select export, and um, it already has it set up as a wavefront object. And I'm just going to save this on the desktop as Jaguar, or just Jag. Well, let's do Jaguar. Um, you want to make sure that you have these settings here. Uh, particularly important down here are the surfaces. You want to collect the maps and you want to write the material library. This will make it so that that uh, Jaguar skin shows up along with the, uh, the Jaguar model. And then accept. And you wait a few seconds and it exports it. And then we'll jump back over here to uh, view. And then we can uh, let's go to the four view mode here. And let's see if I can get somewhere closer to the foreground. Okay, that's right about here. And I'm going to uh, hide a few or make it a little easier to see on this side over here. All right, so now we'll um, import that model. So to do that, you click on this little thing here. It looks like a square with an arrow on it. That That's the load object uh, icon in uh, view. All right, to get to the file system, you just click this little yellow arrow here, and we'll select our Jaguar object. Okay. And it imports it, and there it is right there in our foreground. We just kind of need to place it in the right location. And you might need to you know, work around this a little bit to kind of get a pose, or to get a position just the way you want. All right, and you can kind of see them here in the preview render. Now I'm actually using Vue 9.5 for this. Um, it's an older version of Vue that I have, but I had this scene already built in Vue 9.5 and some of the objects I couldn't get to go over to Vue uh, 2015. So real quick, I'm going to show you in Vue 2015 how you load an object, just so I can cover my bases here. All right, so I just have an empty scene here in Vue. Uh, that, that, that other scene I had was built in Vue 9.5, and I like to kind of keep it there. But I'm going to show you real quick how you load an object here. And it's kind of the same thing. You have a square with an arrow, or a cube with an arrow on it. And you'll click, click and click that. Actually, I think you need to click and hold. Nope, I guess not. All right, and then you get this kind of funny dialog here. But to get out to the file system, you click on this file here. And we'll jump up to the desktop where I save that Jaguar. And there he is. He's a little bit huge in this uh, version, so we'd have to shrink him down. But I just want to show you how to do that in 2015. But now I'm going to go back to 2000, or, uh, View 9.5, just because that's where our scene is. And you can see here, if I uh, do a render, all right, our uh, Jaguar is now in the scene. So we have successfully imported the model. Now he renders, uh, he, he, as he's rendered in this, he catches the shadows from the trees and everything else. But let's say um, you didn't like the way this looks. Uh, let's get rid of him. Just throw him out in the trash here. And we're going to uh, go back to this four view mode. And I, let's say I wanted uh, something that looks a little bit more like it, the way it looks in Daz Studio. So I'm going to go into Daz Studio here. And now you see I have the lights set up kind of similar to uh, the way I had them set up in the view scene. I have a bright light coming from the upper right hand corner and a darker light coming from the left side. Which if I jump back to view here, I have the sunlight, which, uh, let's see, is... Um, up and to the right, and then I have this point light here, uh, somewhere hiding in my here it is, in my 
tree of objects and I have a point light that is to the left of the scene and it's the darker light here and the sunlight's the the full white light so I'm gonna go back to desk studio here so my lights match that and I have the object here and I'm gonna kinda zoom in on him a bit so I get a bigger render kinda get him where I want him and then render Okay, so once the render is done um, I want to make sure I'm going to save this off. I'm going to save it under a file name. In this case, we're going to call it JAG. And make sure that it is a PNG. The, the point of the PNG is that, that you'll have the, uh, the Jaguar, but the background will be transparent. So we'll call him JAG. Save it. And I saved it before as a test, so I'm just going to overwrite the one I did before. And then I'm going to go back to View. And let's find that foreground again. Now I am going to add, I'm going to click and hold here. This, is, this may look different. You may see a sphere or something like that. But if you click and hold, you get the submenu. I'm going to go all the way over here to that, which is called the alpha plane. An alpha plane is just a picture. What you've got to do, though, is load the picture. And you'll have a picture and an alpha. The alpha shows where it should be transparent, and the picture is well, the picture. However, when you load a PNG, it loads both automatically for you. You just click here to load, uh, uh, to go to the picture system and go out to the file system and we'll pick our jag.png and you can see here it created a nice mask for him where the white is see-through and the black is solid and it came in a bit small, we'll grow this a bit and there's our jaguar again now you gotta be careful this is uh, an object in view but it's already a rendered picture and you might get messed up on the lighting a little bit so let's uh, do a quick preview render of that alright so yeah we he rendered here but he's looking a little bit on the dark side and that's because it's a two dimensional picture and it's in the shadow of the trees um, what you might want to do when you do this is uh, when, when your alpha plane is selected double click up here on the textures and there's a little button up here Let's see if we can find it. I believe it's this one right here. That turns off the shadows. It, so it makes it so that the uh, the image won't receive shadows, or the object won't receive shadows. So now when we render it, he's not going to be so dark. All right. And that's looking pretty good there. And so this is the, the, was the second way, where we just used a um, the alpha plane to uh, import a flat image that had already been rendered in another uh, system. So if it had been rendered in Poser or something, there's... You know, you do the same thing, you save it as a PNG file so the background is transparent, and you just kind of uh, composite the picture into the, uh, to the view scene before you render, and when you render, he's right there. Okay, so the third way that we're going to get this Jaguar into the scene is actually to render the scene without the Jaguar at all, and we'll do it in post-production. So let's delete this alpha plane here, and we'll set up a nice final render. Uh, I'm not going to make this one too large for this. It's just a uh, demo. So we'll do uh, 2,000 by 1,500. That's a pretty big render. Uh, make sure we're set up for final and render to screen and then let it go. Okay, so once the render is done, we're just going to save it off. And you do that by clicking on this little symbol up here. It looks like a disk. And we'll put it up on the desktop. Now the next important thing you have to do for this technique to work is you have to save the uh, depth map. And you do that by clicking on the little Z symbol up here. And then you save that off. And then we go to uh, some whatever your favorite uh, uh, image editing software is. In this case I'm going to use GIMP. Okay, so here we are in GIMP and I have uh, loaded the, uh, the render of our forest as well as the uh, the depth map that we saved off and the uh, the Jaguar uh, PNG file that we had saved off from uh, Daz Studio earlier. So all I'm going to do is go into the uh, the depth map here and up in, under colors I'm going to select threshold and what this does is it divides the image into uh, pure black and white based on the level of grayness. And So we're going to find somewhere that kind of separates the foreground from the background and that looks about good to me right there. So we'll just hit OK there. And we're going to copy this and paste it over our uh, main image. 
And I'm going to make that a solid layer by clicking on this uh, little piece of paper down here. And select by color and select the black. And I'm going to throw the layer out. Now I've selected the foreground elements. I just copy that and paste it into a new layer. So now I have the foreground separated from the background. All right, so we're just going to go over here to the Jaguar, and then we're going to copy that and paste it into our main file. Move him to about where we want him, which would be about right here. Let's make that a solid layer. Let's make him a little bigger. Now, normally I wouldn't advise using a GIMP to resize uh, an image larger because it's going to create some pixelation. But for demonstration purposes, um, I'll do this. Now, normally you just want to render a larger picture. So move him back to about here. And now he looks like he's floating over our scene a bit, and that's because he's on top of the foreground. So let's just move the layer down so that he is between the two. And now he's in our image. And that's the third way of getting an image uh, or a character from Gen or from uh, Daz Studio and getting it into uh, a view scene. So I hope this uh, gives you a few ideas and helps out a bit. So if you like this video and you'd like to see more or read some of my articles or even check out some of my art, you can find me on my blog at www.introvertartist.com. And here I post articles on how to make art, how to sell it online, tools that you can use. Uh, I have links to my gallery as well as a, you can subscribe to my newsletter here. And my newsletter is something I send out every Wednesday with news on my latest uh, artworks, articles, videos, promotions, discounts, and I even throw in a few a free computer wallpaper every week. So thanks, everybody, and good night.